Hi guys. Today we will begin our course proper by looking at the history of Poland during the years of the French Revolution. The history of Poland is fascinating during this period, given that the Poles attempted to institute many of the reforms seen in Western Europe and North America, but were denied the ability to reform their country due to the interference of the foreign empires who conquered and divided them. Even revolutionaries in France, as we shall see, only wished to use Poland for their own ends rather than to liberate the country for itself. The country of Poland-Lithuania had resulted from a union of the two powerful 15th century kingdoms of Poland and Lithuania. In the 1700s, Poland-Lithuania was still ruled by a monarch, but instead of being an absolute monarchy, it was a so-called commonwealth, in which the king did not inherit the throne from their father, but rather was elected by the nobles. Every single member of the Polish nobility was eligible to vote in this election, and the fact that 10% of Poland-Lithuania's population was made up of nobles gave the country one of the largest electoral franchises in the world. The fact that they were elected lessened the power of the kings who were forced to cooperate with the nobles rather than battle against them. The Polish, the Polish system had a vital weakness known as the liberum veto. The liberum veto was the right of any nobleman to block any law in the Polish Senate the same that they did not agree with. All it took was one single person to stand up and say that they objected. This became a major issue when foreign powers such as Prussia or Russia bribed nobles to block any laws that would have made Poland stronger. As a result, the country stagnated. It was unable to pass any laws that would, for example, have given it a large army to defend itself from attack. The Russians also interfered in the election of Poland's kings, making sure that the weak rulers of Saxony were given command of the country, rather than, for example, a French duke or a Habsburg. Poland had lost much land since the 16th century, first to Sweden and then to Russia, who had taken the vital cultural city of Kiev in the second half of the 1600s. The Duchy of Prussia had also become independent, with the Prussian Duke crowning himself in 1701, a move which began Prussia's rapid rise into the ranks of the great powers. Nonetheless, when we talk of the partitions of Poland, we are talking about three distinct events in the late 18th century, in which Poland, Lithuania's neighbours, carved out the unfortunate country amongst themselves. In 1764, the King of Poland died, and the nobility gathered to elect a new ruler. Russia spent millions of rubles in bribes to ensure that their favoured candidate, the Polish noble Stanisław Poniatowski, won the election. To ensure that the election went in their favour, the Russians also moved their army into Warsaw. Poniatowski was the rumoured former lover of the Russian Empress Catherine the Great and was seen by the Russians as a puppet who would ensure that their influence in Poland remained strong. Unfortunately, Poniatowski did not wish to follow the directives he received from St. Petersburg and displayed independent thought in many of the decisions that he took. At the same time, he was unable to assert his will upon the rowdy conservative nobles who, consid who continued to ignore rural, royal sorry, reform prerogatives at every opportunity. To protect their privileges from the new reforms, as well as the borders of Poland from foreign interference, the nobles rose up in open rebellion in the so-called Confederacy of Bar. Although the Confederacy was crushed with the help of the Russians, it cost Poland, Lithuania a large amount of money and resulted in the death of some of the kingdom's finest soldiers. 
Now, none of the Polish partitions had any moral basis, but even so, the first partition was the most unjust of all three. The catalyst for the first partition came from events in the Ottoman Empire, as Russian victories against the Ottomans threatened Habsburg influence in the, Bal in the Balkans. In 1772, Frederick the Great of Prussia, unwilling to let tensions between the powers rise at a time when his country was still recovering from the bloodshed of the Seven Years' War, proposed deflecting these tensions by turning the gaze of the powers towards innocent and helpless Poland, who would be unable to respond to any acts of aggression. Frederick proposed that Austria, Prussia and Russia should all take chunks of Poland for themselves. The Russians, traumatised by memories of the Bar Uprising and disturbed by Poniatowski's displays of independence, agreed to participate, knowing, even knowing that the partitions would fatally weaken their vassal state. In the face of widespread European apathy, the Polish shame and the king were forced to go along with the division of parts of their country. Of the three powers, Russia took the largest amount of land consisting of the eastern part of today's Belarus. These lands were, however, poor and consisted of only 1.3 million residents. Prussia's conquests were both far smaller and far richer. Their acquisition allowed Frederick to link the two main portions of his realm into one large snake-like kingdom hugging the Baltic Sea. The Prussians began an extensive colonisation of these new lands, resettling Protestants there from throughout Germany. Poland lost its access to the sea and now had to pay expensive tolls to Prussia, sapping the strength of, it, of their kingdom. Austria received a very large portion of southern Poland, containing about 2.6 million residents. The Austrians reorganised their lands into the new Kingdom of Galicia, which was added to the Habsburgs' already impressive collection of titles. The partition spurred on reform efforts within Poland. The 1770s and 1780s saw an exciting flourishing in Polish art and culture, as both Poles and Lithuanians attempted to assert themselves in the face of foreign hostility. The Polish army was restructured and modernised. These efforts increased following the American Revolution and the concurrent reforms in France, Poland's only friend in Europe. In 1790, an unlikely alliance with Prussia, as well as Ottoman as well as Russian and Austrian distractions in the Ottoman Empire, convinced the Poles that they could reform their country without having to worry about foreign interference. In 1791, these reforms led to the first modern constitution being written in European history, and only the second modern constitution in the world after the US constitution. The Polish constitution clearly delineated the power of the king and separated the legislature, executive and judiciary, just like in the US. The liberum veto was abolished, the franchise extended to the middle class, and abuses against the serfs were made illegal. Catherine the Great reacted to the constitution with fury. She accused the Poles of being influenced by the French Revolution and Jacobinism, but most of all, she was furious that she hadn't been consulted before the constitution was introduced. In 1792, Russia, encouraged by an invitation from conservative Polish nobles, launched an all-out invasion of the country. Poland expected aid from Prussia, but by this point the Prussians were distracted by their own invasion of France. Besides, Prussia also felt betrayed by the constitution, not having expected the Poles to go as far as they had done. Prussia informed Poland that the Polish state had been reformed so much that the previous agreement made between the countries was now untenable. 
The Poles fought, fought well in the war with the Russians and ably deflected the Russian advances. Nonetheless, the king, believing that Russia could be reasoned with, sued for peace and disbanded his army. This was a massive mistake. The Russians used a series of bribes to ensure that the Senate did not set, settle for a reasonable peace, instead conceding vast swathes of land in what is known as the Second Partition. In this partition, Russia took a truly extraordinary amount of land, ending Polish and Lithuanian rule in today's Ukraine and Belarus. Prussia was rewarded for its indecision with large gains in northwest Poland. Poland, Lithuania was now a small, strange looking state formed of only the central parts of the former Commonwealth. The nobles who had invited Russia to intervene against the constitution were shocked. They had expected Russia to, de to destroy the constitution, but not to take as many lands as they had. The king lost incredible amounts of prestige from this partition and became to be seen as little more than a simpering Russian stooge. Growing anger with the terms of the second partition led to what is known as the Kosciuszko Uprising. Tadeusz, Ko Tadeusz Kosciuszko was a military general and engineer who had fought in the Revolutionary War on the side of the United States. The impressive fortifications he constructed to aid the 13 colonies in their struggle against Great Britain included the fortress of West Point, New York. Kosciuszko returned to Poland in the 1780s, helping to spearhead the military reforms being made there. Following the Second Partition, he launched a general uprising in Poland in which, in which he promised not only to liberate the country, but also to strengthen universal liberties. After a series of early victories, the general went further, proclaiming an end to serfdom in Poland. Unfortunately, fighting three powers at once was too much, even for the Poles, and the uprising was defeated. The Third Partition of Poland soon followed. In this division, Poland disappeared entirely from the map and wouldn't appear again until 1918. The Russians took the ancient Lithuanian capital of Vilnius, the Prussians took the Polish capital of Warsaw, and Austria took the former capital of Krakow in the south. Polish intellectuals were forced to flee to Western Europe and North America in the so-called Great Migration. In Austrian Poland, even using the word Poland was banned. The flight of so many cultural figures from Poland gave rise to a Polish romantic movement that longed for the freedom of the homeland. Many Polish exiles left for France, which was in the middle of its revolution. One of the unofficial leaders of these exiles, Jan Henryk Dąbrowski, petitioned the French general Napoleon to create a so-called legion of dispossessed Poles to fight against Austria for the freedom of their homeland. In 1797 this request was granted and Polish forces were used by the French for the first time during Napoleon's successful campaign in Italy. The Polish forces did not just fight with distinction, they proved to be some of Napoleon's best trained and most committed forces. It was during this time that the Polish national anthem was con composed promising that Dombrowski and his men would come to liberate the homeland. This was not to be. The Poles grew increasingly angry as it became apparent that the French were not planning on liberating their country. Napoleon, now France's leader, responded by shipping his Polish forces off to fight in Haiti. In the Caribbean, the vast majority of these Poles died, either from disease or from combat with the locals. The Poles' wish for an independent state continued until 1807. Following, the, following Napoleon's victory over Prussia, the Frenchman, who was now emperor, 
re-established a small Polish state centred on Warsaw. So as to not offend Austria and Russia in a time when he desired peace with them, Napoleon named this new state the Duchy of Warsaw rather than the Duchy of Poland. The duke of this new state was the King of Saxony, descendant of the old line of 18th century kings. The laws of the Duchy of Warsaw were based on the Napoleonic Code that the French Emperor introduced throughout Europe, which guaranteed personal liberties in return for a strong executive power and for mass conscription. Following another victory by Napoleon, this time over Austria, the duchy grew larger, gaining lands that the Austrians had taken in the Third Partition, including the city of Krakow. The Duchy of Warsaw now had 4 million residents and was one of the largest Napoleonic client states in terms of its size. Napoleon's invasion of Russia in 1812 was greeted by Poles and Lithuanians as a chance to restore the lost territories of the East. The duchy managed to raise an army of nearly 100,000 men, all funded by Poles themselves. The disastrous outcome of Napoleon's invasion in which Moscow was taken, but the French were forced to retreat in a brutal winter, doomed Poland. Barely 10% of the Poles who invaded with the French army made it back home, which was retaken by the Russians in February 1813. At the subsequent Battle of Leipzig, the Polish hero Józef Poniatowski, nephew of the former king, was killed whilst protecting Emperor Napoleon's retreat. The dream of Polish independence was now crushed. The lands that had formed the Duchy of Warsaw were turned into a kingdom, the Congress Kingdom of Poland, and Krakow was given independence as a city-state. The crown of Poland passed to the Russian Emperor in a similar way to the Austrian Emperor being simultaneously King of Hungary. At first the Poles of Congress Poland were given many freedoms particularly the nobles. However, a failed uprising ten years later would see St. Petersburg assuming direct control. Russian rule in Poland would eventually prove to be even harsher than that of the Prussians and of the Austrians.